Right, folks, we're back on car repairs at the moment. We've got the Vauxhall Signum here. This is a 1.9 CDTI. And Jimmy said it's screeching down the road like a blinking fighter jet going over the top. My initial thoughts were wheel bearing, rear wheel bearing. So we took the wheel off, had a look, and we found the pads right down on the discs. And also the discs are knackered as well. So we've got a new pad and disc set for the rear. We're going to start doing them today and get the disc off and the pads off and replace them. I'll see you in a minute. Right, I've just positioned the jack under the car. We've undone the wheels on this side, the wheel nuts on this side. I'm ready now to jack it up, put it on an axle stand, take the wheel off. So I'll put you on a bit of time lapse for that. I'll see you in a minute. Right, so this is what I came up against. As you can probably see there, look, there's absolutely no meat left on that brake pad at all. And uh, the discs are in, I know they're a bit rusty because it's been standing for over a week now. So, uh, and obviously the discs ain't too great. There's loads of ridges in them. So that's the reason why we're changing them. And we don't just change one on one side. We do it on both sides. So I've got both sets as well. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem. I've got a little spring clip to come out here, which that one's actually broken. Look, I've just seen that, look. So we'll have to order another one of them. I've only just found that out. So there you go. And at the back here, to take this um, brake caliper off, we need to undo two well i think they're torx nuts under there it could be allen bolts i'm not too sure but there's some caps there which you undo there we go and in there we'll find either an allen key i think it might be an eight mil or seven mil i can't remember i don't think it's a torx i'm sure it's a seven mil allen key so i've got some of them one top one at the bottom that means we should be able to take the caliper out of the way then we've then got to remove the um the hole the caliper holder and that's done by again some bolts down here Remove that out of the way, and then we can um, obviously get the disc off. There is a retaining screw on the disc. Some of them don't have them on. Some of them are just left floating. We can then withdraw the disc, and then we can put the new ones on. So let's make a start doing that. I'm going to undo these caliper bolts now and um, get this caliper off. Right, okay. I've got me 3 8 drive and some long Allen bolts. Allen keys, rather, not Allen bolts. Let's take that bottom plug out of there. The handbrake is off, by the way, folks, just to let you know. And I'm thinking it's a 7 or an 8mm, if I remember rightly. Yeah, it's a 7mm. There we go. So let's just crack that off. Now, these are long ones I've got here, so hopefully they'll go in all right. These shouldn't be too tight, by the way, folks. There we go. And these can be one of the reasons why your brakes stick on, because these are your slider pins that allow your caliper to slide in and out. And if they've got loads of crap around them, they can um, not slide in these little rubber boots here through there correctly and make your brakes stick on and squeal. Right, that one's undone. The one above, I've already taken the pin out. This one could be a bit of a nuisance. Because you can only go by what you've got at the moment. I've only got a large seven mil. Oh, there we go, look. <laughs> Good, isn't it? I'll have to put an extension on there. Normally, your folks, you'd have just a normal seven mil Allen bolt in there, which I've got one in the garage, but I'm out here and I'm not going out there again. I've been out there for the last eight times. Ah, oh, look, look, look. And it's typical, isn't it? <laughs> God, blimey. Oh, I don't know. These things are sent to try us. Look at that, look. I've got to go. I've got to go to the workshop again, folks. Oh, for the new upteenth time and get me other Allen bolts. So I'll be back in a second. Right. For the upteenth time, I've had to walk to the Blinken workshop. And my Halfords Professional range has a 6mm and an 8mm, but not a 7mm. And my other Allen key set, which I bought, Again, which is just a pure Allen keys, has the same thing. Six and eight mil, but not a seven mil. So I've got other ones, which is my half inch US Pro set, which I've had to resort to. And uh, that's what I'm saying. You've just got to have a bit of everything in your tool kit. Oh, oh is that seven mil? Hold on. 
Yeah, seven mil. Let's get that up there. Right, that's in. Can you see that, folks? Click that in there. Like that. And then undo. And when you've got the right tools, it's a piece of cake. There you go. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? So, just having a standard universal socket set sometimes isn't quite enough. You have to buy other ones, other kits, and I've got the, as I say, I've got a, another set of Allen keys and uh, lucky enough, a seven mils in there. There are some unusual t sizes. That's like when you go for the spanners. There's not an 18 mil in that socket set as well, that, that universal socket set, that, that professional set I've got. You've got a 17, 15 and a 17, and then a 19. They don't put an 18 in there for some reason. Right, I think that's it. Let's get that out. Just to sort of push them pins through. And they're very tight in there, so there's a good chance they aren't going to be seized. There we go, there we go. See, come in, look. Just get a little screw top. Don't damage your threads on your screw, though. Again, my screwdriver is out the back. <laughs> I'm not going out there again right now. I'll make do with this. You see how tight them pins are? Which can make your brakes stick on. So we'll have to lubricate these pins when they come out. Because they do get corroded. And that's one of the reasons, as I said earlier on, that your brakes squeal. There we go, look at that, look. Look at that, see that black rim around there, look. All that is what holds them in place and keeps your brakes on, which will unnaturally wear your brakes. So I'm gonna get the top one out now, we'll pull the caliper off. So, just ease that one out as well. That one's not too bad, look. But it's still sticking. There we go, we'll clean all them out. Look at that, look at the crap around that one, look. Big ridge of it there, look. So as I said, the um, handbrake's not on, so we've now got to get this caliper out. So we will need another one of them. That's gonna snap off, that is. That's gonna snap off. Yeah, that's seized in there totally. Look at that, look. Here we go, look. Just ease that off. That's well tight on there. They've probably been sticking on for quite a while. Terrible. See, that's just getting caught on there now, look. There we go, that's what them springs, springs hold them calipers on, you see. God, these have been sticking for a long time, look at that, look. There we go. Now, just to note there, that, um, just don't want to put no pressure on your brake caliper pipe. And also, the outer pad, which is this one, totally falling apart, looks like it's got some sort of squeal pad on it. And also, there's the inner pad, look. Oh, sorry, the outer pad. Wow, look at that, look. Unbelievable. He should have been making a noise well before that. But the MOT last year, you would have thought would have picked that. That was really low and put that down as an advisory. Because some people don't know about checking cars and they rely on the MOT. But there you go. So that's that. Right down on the disc. And the inner pad on this one, as you can see, it's got a little spring clip on it. That should just come backwards. There we go. And that just goes in that way, just for a record, look. Again, there's another squirrel plate on the back there, which is totally, totally disintegrated, look. And that one was virtually down as well. Right, okay, that's the pads off. We've now got to get this carrier off. I'm just going to push this over to one side over there. We'll deal with that spring afterwards. But you see, I've got no tension on this uh, rubber pipe there. And also inspect that rubber pipe and also your brake pipe as well while you're under here. Because all these sort of things are MOT failures as well. And if there's any sign of any rust here, or any perforations here, it will foul its next MOT. So just visual inspection on all that. Look, this one looks all in order, so I'm happy with that. And that's them pin sliders, what they go in there. So you just gotta make sure they're clean. I will have to get this clip out of there. I'll have to order another one to put this on and uh, I'll have to do that and get that in tomorrow. We haven't got it here today anyway. So while I'm here, I am just spinning the wheel because I wasn't sure whether it was the wheel bearing initially, but um, as you can hear, there's nothing wrong with that wheel bearing at all. And again, it's always wise to check that in this case. And on this one, we've got a little Torx piece on there 
I'm not sure what size that is yet, but that's got to come undone. They can be a bit of a pain them, so make sure you have got a good fitting torx and make sure that the thread is clean before you attempt to take that little nut off. Otherwise, you've got to drill it out and that causes all sorts of problems. Coming around the back of the caliper now, you can see these two big, large E sockets here. Again, they're going to want wire brushing down because these are going to be tight and these are the ones that hold this bracket on there. There's just one top there and one bottom there, as you can probably see. They've got to come off, so wire brush them Get them really good and clean first before you attempt to undo them because if they if that rounds off then you've got all sorts of problems and you don't want them so make sure they're clean all right okay so let's get these cleaned off a little bit it's got a wire brush here oh, i've got a mask on by the way folks you can't see that but i've got a mask on here because you don't want to be breathing in any of this dust at all now i'll get around the back of them as well look you want these as clean as possible and yeah, I should have my rubber gloves on, but I guess again, just one other thing I've forgotten. <clears throat> right, okay. Right, okay. That's an E18. And that's the size they obviously are. Now, I know these are going to be tight, so I've got a breaker bar here. But half of the problem is, it's getting in so that you can see it. These are half inch, by the way. I'm going to come around the back. Hold on. Bear with me. So these are going to be wanting pulling, pulling upwards. So that's in there. Oh, here we go. We've got to turn on that, so I'm happy that one's cracked. The one above it. There we go. Right, so we've cracked them. So let's get that off. And let's undo these little babies. Oh, here we go. As I say, these can be really tight, folks, so you really want to not rely on a cheap socket if you've got your cheap bling 10 pound socket set make sure you've got a good heavy duty set for undoing things like this now these are normally thread locked on as well although these ones don't appear to be they might have been in the past it looks like someone's put grease on them instead I can see the blue thread lock in there Okay, get that one out. That one's exactly the same. Right, folks, so that now lifts off. That can be totally cleaned up before we put it back on. And as you can probably see on that bracket there, you can see the remnants of blue where someone's initially had thread lock on them. So they will get thread locked again because you don't want these coming loose. These are what hold your brake calipers in place so that your car can stop. Final thing to get off, folks, is the. Um the T, whatever it is, I don't know what number it is. I've got some uh, Torx bits here. What's this one? T25? No, it's bigger than that. T27. Could be a T27. No, it's a T30. So it's a T30, folks. Let me just crack that. There we go. That's all you need. They can be a pig, these, so just beware. Little T30, literally, it's just a little grub screw. Keep that safe. Now, hopefully, there we go. Off comes our disc, which we're in here. Dis discard, discard, <laughs> look at me. And put our new one back on. Before we do that, I will just check this hub again. There is no play in it. We've checked for that. We've checked that the uh, hub's running nice and clean. I've got my mask again, let's put that on. Because what I like to do, this one's not too bad, but sometimes these can be really rusted on these. So just give that a bit of a happy birthday with a with a wire brush. And what you can do as well is also to just clean out the inside of your shield, your dust shield, and all around that area. Just gives a bit more maintenance to the car rather than let dust build up and stuff like that because you ain't gonna have this off again in a hurry so you might just give it a bit of a pretty pretty boy clean up now we'll give that edge a wipe down this is the important edge the one i'm cleaning now just in there give that a clean down and i also like to put a bit of um copper grease in there just copper slip around there any grease will do really so that the disc don't get seized on 
And then we've got to deal with the caliper. Now on these calipers, these are winding calipers. You can tell that because they've normally got a couple of holes in them or a couple of um, dint, dint, dents in the side. And depending on what dents you got will indicate what type of tool you're going to need to wind them back in. I'm also checking the rubber boot here, the seal. This will all get a wire brush down as well in a clean uh, and an inspection. That seems to all be in good order. So we'll have to wind these calipers in with my caliper winding tool. And um, then we can fit everything back together. So I'm going to clean this up, get these pins out. I might have an old one of these floating about somewhere. I'll have to have a check and I'll come back to you. Okay, folks. So I'm going to wind this caliper back in. And to do that, you need a winding in tool with the right edges on it. So as you can probably see down here, I've got a set with many different ends on it. And I've chosen the right end for this caliper. I'll just get this in position first, folks, and then you can uh, see it correctly. So let me just get this in the right position. The idea of this is to turn the piston and push it in at the same time. Oh, I'm going to have to get an adjustable spanner on there, I think. And give that a turn with a wrench. Right, let's get that on there. Maybe get a start. Okay, right. Get that on there. Oh, I'm trying to get that moving. I'm trying to get that piston moving. I was just on the verge of taking the caliper off, folks, and I thought I'd try it one more time. This is ultra tight to get started. It's bent that, as you can see. Look at that. Look, I had a lever on that. It's bent that thing right over. And the only way I can get it done without taking the caliper off is getting someone else to put their foot on there while I give it a good turn. And I've actually got it moving now, so Gary's just going to hold it there. Don't push nothing yet, because I ain't got no bits in there yet. Put the tool in. But again, two-handed job. Silly little job like this. Oh, it's falling out that pin again. Though. Don't push your hard. Probably push it's falling out. As I say, sometimes it don't go quite to plan. And the reason why you have to put that plate in is because you need to, as you wind in, it's pushing against that plate, otherwise it's just spinning otherwise, you see? So you need this special tool. You can't just turn, you've got to turn and push at the same time. And as you can see, sometimes you need more than one hand. I thought I'd show you this because this is a typical of what happens when it don't go plan. Don't go plan, don't go to plan. So if I can just hold that like that, you can just put your foot there, Gary. Just don't push it, don't push it, just sort of hold your foot there. Otherwise you'll catch my fingers. Right, the piston's winding in now. I'll show you in a minute, folks. Bear with me. Now, on this one, let go for a minute. The rubber boots come off, as you can probably see there, look. And that happens as well sometimes, look. Because of all the corrosion sitting under the the, the, uh, the lip. You have to clean all that out as well. And dealing with old calipers can be a blinking nightmare. So once I finish winding it in, I'll have to put that boot back in place. Going in now. Which is the way it should have happened in the first place. But sometimes when they come so far out, which this one obviously did, that can give you all your problems of it getting seized out. Look how easy that was turning now, look. <clears throat> so you take it till it's right the way in. There we go. Take the tool out. See, this just shows you how awkward it can be. Watching a YouTube video where everything goes to plan with new parts and all that don't always work, does it? There we go. So we've got that caliper wound right back in now. And I'm just cleaning under that boot there. With the corrosion that's in there. There we go. Right, okay. So there we go. There's our caliper wound right in. 
there's no problem with the boot. That's ready to go. The only thing I've got to do now is to drill these two pins out of here. I'm going to use an oversight because they've actually got a little bit sticking up in the middle. So I'm going to try and punch them through first. But you can't punch them right through because it's a blind hole at the back. There's no hole there. So I've got to try and flatten them off first. And then I'm going to have to drill the holes out. And we're lucky enough we've got a spare spring. And then we can put it all back together. So I'll do that first and then I'll come back to you. I'll see you in a minute. Right, okay then, so these are the discs and pads which Jimmy bought, nothing to do with me, he's chosen. It's Comline, whatever that are, and uh, these are coated disc brakes, and what it says on there, always read the instructions because they're all different. These come what they call fitment ready. With Comline coated disc pads, fitment time is greatly reduced. Each time every disc is delivered, fitment ready, and unlike standard or painted options, come coated brake discs do not require any cleaning prior or degreasing. So it actually says that there on the on the manufacturer's blurb. So this is a sealed bag because they do some of them do spray a, a, a grey paint on them, and um, sometimes you have to clean them off. Sometimes you don't. So as you can see, that's got a shiny grey painted surface on it, and that doesn't require anything else apart from plonking straight back on. I've got the pads here, and as far as the pins are concerned I've actually drilled them next to them the trouble what we got with these is is they were seized in there broken off flat sort of thing I tried cutting them the other pins are still actually in there and I've had to drill down the side of them the actual calipers are made out of alley so you can't drill a solid pin out because it keeps drifting off and as you can see there I've also got another spring clip which I'm hoping is going to go in there going to be okay I've drilled down enough and that size down the side there so I'm hopefully they're going to they look like they're going to fit in there yeah, that one's going in all right look See, and I'm hoping the other one's going to be exactly the same. So that's the new clips, or re replacement clips. Calipers wound straight in and the boot's back on, as you can see. I have got a bit of a um, carb cleaner here, or brake cleaner, whatever you want to call it. I will just give that a bit of a clean over. Just give that like that. And a little wipe down. It does evaporate off. I have actually wiped these down, as you well know, but... Uh, just to get any other signs of grease out of the way. Keep that to the side again, I'm not putting no strain on that pipe there. There we go. We're going to place our disc on, but first of all, I'm just going to apply a little bit of um, anti-seize copper slip, just around that thin edge there. Stops the disc from seizing on it. So that's that. And make sure before you do um, fit your discs that you've got the right discs. These are 279 mil solid discs, five hole pattern for the um, car in question. And make sure, like me, you put them in the right way. There we go. And that there was a T30, if I remember rightly. And again, you haven't got to lean on that to make it tight. It's literally just a locating, just a locating pin. Literally, just a little nip up like that. Right, okay. So we know we don't need to wipe these discs down at all or clean them in any way. And there you go, nice and silent. Back on, just make sure your brake cover isn't touching the disc at all. And these are our two bolts, which as you can see, I've cleaned up on the wire wheel. And we're going to thread lock these. These are the ones that hold the carrier back on. This is what I do. Just drop a bit on one. And then I normally get the other one and just spin it around. You only want them around the edge there. You don't want them any further than that. And that gets them all in the threads there, look. Just like that. They're both ready to be inserted. So as far as the brake carrier is concerned, I've cleaned up where I need to clean up. I could have uh, sandblasted all of it, but I've done the bits inside where I needed to be, where the um, pads actually rest on. So we'll get that fitted now, using our new bolts. So look how easy they screw in when the threads are clean. There we go, look. Nice and easy, look. Oh, there we go. 
Right, okay, folks. There we go. Still moving nice and freely. So we'll ease our caliper down into its rough position. We'll get out our pads. Remembering we've got two different types. We've got the spring ones which go on the inside and we've got the plain ones which go on the outside. So we'll sit these in the corresponding slots down here. But what I will do is I'll get a little bit of copper slip just on the towels there, look. Inside and out, where the pads are gonna run on. There you go, not too much, just enough. We'll put the spring clip one on the inside. We'll sit this one on the outside and then we'll ease our caliper over like thus. It should go in nice and easy. What I've also done is I've cleaned up these pins now, as you can see, the ones that slide through the rubber boots, and I'll give these a light grease in, slide them in, and then we'll tighten these uh, seven mils up. Right, they're done up now. Just put these little caps back in the, uh, the back of them. Keep the things clean. Now we've got this um, spring to put back on the front. Hopefully, it'll go in. I'll get that one in there. Get that one in there. And pull that over there like that. And I'm hoping. Give that a little tap in there. There we go. Yep. There we go. I've connected the uh, handbrake cable back up because I did disconnect that thinking I was going to take the caliper off, but uh, just put my foot on the brakes. Pedals come right up. Job done. Clean that excess off of there. So I've just got to put the wheel on and then we can uh, safely say this side's done. This paint, as I say, that uh, this paint does wear off. So don't worry about that. It's all specially designed to be like that. Right, okay folks, I've just got to tighten the wheel up. I've taken the axle stand out, that's out of the way. Let's drop that down. This Clark two ton strong arm jack has been phenomenal for working on cars. Absolutely phenomenal. Low profile, I thoroughly recommend it. Anyway, that's enough of that. I think there's a link in the description for that as well. So let's just whip these up. Two, three, four, and five. Right, folks, that's it. As you can see, I've got a bit of dirt on my face, but uh, that comes with working on cars, and I've got plenty of dirt on my hands where I should have put my gloves on. Anyway, that's enough of that. Now I'm going to do the other side now. I won't film that. It takes a lot longer to do it while it films, but I just thought I'd show you the process. And sometimes some of the things you do come up against what you don't normally see are normally edited out. I like to show them sort of things. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. Don't forget, if you do like my video, hit the subscribe button down there, ring the little notification bell and set your preferences to all. That way you'll get a ping or a notification come through on your phone whenever I upload a video. Check out my other playlist. I've got loads of other playlists there with motorcycle repairs, restorations, we've got cars. We've got other sort of stuff and all general sort of um, repair work and stuff like that. We've got vlogs as well, so uh, plenty to look at. Hours and hours of fun. Well, not for you, maybe, but for me in uh, making them. Thanks very much, folks. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.